All right, let's continue, uh, continue reassembly of the FX impact. As before, we pressurized it to mark the gauge, let it sit overnight. And if the gauge hasn't moved, so there's no leak. So that's what we'll continue with the reassembly. All right, we're going to install the hammer spring, spring guide assembly. Let's shoot it this way. The spring, spring guide, the hammer, the bumper, and your hammer rest. All right, to do that, you need to remove the bottle to get access to the inner the valve rod. And you need to bleed the regulator section because uh, you, you wouldn't be able to pull the valve rod out. Remember, you just use a uh, two and a half mil. Gradually turn it clockwise. It's going to relieve the pressure on the regulator side. Now, since this section is already sealed, I don't want to break the seal. So I'm just going to pull the valve rod out. Since there's no pressure, I could pull it out. All right. All right. What well, tool I'm gonna use is a modified vice grip. I kind of honed down half moon groove on it, and it's really smooth, so it doesn't gouge up the rod. First, it goes on is a hammer spring. Slide this in, and your spring guide keeps the the spring up straight while it's being compressed. Then your actual hammer. Make sure when you put the, uh, inspect this hammer, uh, there's no dings on this because this is where actually shear catches it and holds the tension of the hammer and the spring. Sometimes if you don't fully close your hammer, you, you left it accidentally open. Well, the hammer is going to smack your, your cocking pin. It's going to come down and smack it because it's in the way because it didn't, the handle wasn't fully closed. So you gotta inspect there's no dings on it, bunch of markings. If you do, you need to replace it because it's gonna affect how the shear catches that hammer. All right, when it affects the hammer, that means your trigger pull is gonna be different. You know, it's not gonna be consistent. All right, well, what's in there? All right, I got the spring, got the hammer. Now I got your little C3 bumper. All right, now we're gonna clamp it. Put the bumper right there and we'll clamp it right above here. The reason for putting a vice grip here because we're going to torque and lock tight this hammer seat here. And if you don't, over time, because this is what ha the hammer hits to open the valve. It's constantly being beaten. And if the screw is not locked tight, it's going to back out and your velocity is going to drop. It's not going to be consistent. All right. All right. What we're going to use is to tighten this. Since this is a, a first generation, it has a set screw in here. All right. Usually on the second generation, I have this tool here and put a alignment pin through this hole. There's no threads in it. So I put a and clamp it on tight. Since this is generation one, can't put a, a pin over there and tighten it. What I'm going to do is, there's another modified vice grip. This half moon shape here, so it doesn't really gouge it out, but it gives it a nice, you want to jam it to the other tight while the Loctite is in place. So we're going to use this, uh, kind of use red, it kind of holds out better, and I can still remove it. Make a mess here. We'll pull it 
apply on the threads. Now you want to screw on your hammer seat. Now it's hand tight. Now is the key is you tighten both together tight till one of them starts slipping. All right, that means it's jammed in there pretty tight. And most of the time, well, I never see one backed out doing it this procedure like that. I can see the rod. One of them, now the rod is slipping, so that means they're pretty tight. Get up the vice grip. When you let it go, the spring wants to spring back. You don't want to do that because sometimes when it springs back, it doesn't go in this little teeny hole here, the bore. All right. You don't want no nick on the end of the rod. So when you when you put your valve adjuster back in, make sure your whole rod is seated in the back. You could, when it's seated, you could see it here sticking out. It's kind of kind of rotate it, and it pops in, and you can see the end of the valve here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's flush now. Now we could put back your valve adjuster. All right, like that. And you don't really need to tighten this really tight. All right, just, just a little bit because the wall on this hex is kind of thin. If you, if you really torque it, you probably snap that piece off. So that's a no-no, okay? Then, when you put this, I don't know if you inspect it for, make sure this, this rubber ball is in good shape. If there is a uh, indentation where the hammer keeps hitting it, you can take it out and flip it over, right? So you get a nice, you know, surf, brand new surface to hit on. All right, the uh, default setting to put this on when you do your testing, just put uh, line number four, all right? And usually this is the last thing you adjust after you get your velocity. Then you start tightening this down until your velocity is starting to drop. That meaning you have total control of velocity by your valve adjuster. If you don't, if it's fully open, you're wasting air. It's going to get a little louder. So it's not very consistent, efficient. All right.